Crime Seminar. Today we have two talks given by two speakers. Uh, the first session is about solution multiplicity and effects of data and eddy viscosity on Navier Stokes uh, solutions inferred by physics informed neural networks. Uh, the first speaker is Zhisheng Wang. Zhisheng Wang is an associate professor from School of Energy and Power Engineering at Dalian University of Technology, working at the Laboratory of Ocean Energy Utilization of Ministry of Education. Uh, Li Cheng uh, used to be a member of Crunch as a postdoc here at Brown University. So we are very happy to have you here today. Uh, the floor is yours, the virtual floor. So you can begin your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit a long title, um, but uh, actually my um, presentation is mostly about uh, how to uh, use uh, Adversity or artificial visibility to improve uh, uh, the prediction by by pins. Uh, so my my name is Zicheng Wang, and uh, this is a uh, uh, joint work uh, with uh, Professor Xu Hui Meng, uh, who was a uh, postdoc uh, in Georgia Group, and uh, Hui Xiang. Uh, she uh, once uh, worked for. Uh, by two company here in China, but now he she is uh, 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 at Dalian University of Technology, and uh, uh, Professor Xiao Mo Jiang, uh, who is uh, uh, he is uh, uh, my uh, group leader. Uh, he is uh, uh, very uh, supportive and uh, for this study. Uh, also, uh, George, uh, you know. Uh, uh, supervised uh, all the the whole study from the very beginning until uh, writing the, the paper, and uh, I also uh, want to give a special thanks uh, to uh, Professor uh, Shen Zetai at uh, uh, Zhejiang University. Uh, without uh, his uh, generous help, uh, we uh, we will never be able to uh, uh, finish uh, this study. Um, so, uh, today, uh, my, uh, presentation, uh, have, uh, has, uh, four parts. Uh, first, I uh, will talk about, uh, 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 why we, uh, uh, we, we do, uh, we did this, uh, study, and then, uh, I will talk about, uh, uh give a little bit of details of the pins with, uh, uh artificial visibility and its application in uh, cavity flow. And uh, uh, thirdly, I will uh, explain uh, why uh, the entropy visibility or the artificial visibility can improve uh, the prediction from the uh, perspective of uh, uh, loss at speed. And uh, finally, I will uh, give uh, uh, the conclusion. So um, since uh, uh, the the first paper of PIN, uh, which was published, which was written by, uh, 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 in, uh, uh, which was published in, in GSAP several years ago, uh, there are already like you know thousands of paper, uh, uh, in uh, many 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 fields, uh, but our focus is uh, PIN for uh, fluid mechanics, so for flow problems, um. The loss function of pins are uh, has uh, uh, four parts. Uh, the the uh, for, uh, the, uh, the the first one is uh, uh, loss uh, the loss function of PDE, which is uh, the Navier Stokes equation. The second one is the uh, loss PDE of the labeled data, and then uh, if the uh, Navier Stokes equation is uh, uh, unsteady, so there will be initial condition. And also uh, the boundary condition. Uh, in particular, when there is no uh, label data is used, um, uh, the problem, uh, uh, the pin problem, the pin solution can be, um, uh, you know, can be somehow can be e is equal to uh, uh, safety. Uh, and our uh, mainly uh, we mainly focused on on uh, the pin. Uh, Without you know uh, any uh, label data. Okay, so uh, sorry. 
just uh, just more function. Um, so uh, pins are uh, have been uh successful in many uh uh many areas or many fields. And here is uh, one of the example which was uh, uh done by prof by uh, Dr. Sun Tai uh, back to uh, 20, uh, 2021. Um, so it is uh, so he used uh, use the pins to uh, predict or infer uh, the natural convection uh, of uh, 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 over an uh, espresso uh, espresso cup uh, by uh, using um, uh, the Shelian uh, images. So the Shelian images, so the Shelian images actually is a uh, is a kind of uh, um, uh, sparse uh, uh, temperature data. Uh, so as shown by uh, the fake on the bottom left. So by using this sparse data and the pins, we so he can um, uh, infer the uh, dense and the smooth uh, temperature field, as well as uh, uh, the velocity field and uh, uh, pressure. Um, so it is a, a successful uh, example. However, uh, and there are many like you know uh, example that. Uh, uh, show the pin fails uh, in prediction uh, some of the uh, benchmark problems at a moderate or high load number. Here are two of them, two of the examples. Uh, so the uh, fake on so the uh, fake on the left shows uh, pins um, uh, fail to predict the lead driven cavity flow at a little to number uh, one thousand. Uh, so this work was uh, uh, just published in uh, International General Numeric Methods in Fluids uh, this year, 2023, 20, uh, uh, as shown in, in the fake, um, the pin uh, result is uh, uh, the uh, blue dashed one, as you can see, um, uh, it uh, uh, divides uh, from the uh, safety solution or from the um, ground truth a lot. And uh, another example is uh, shown in the, uh, the right here. Um, so it fails to uh, uh, predict the vortex shading or flow past the cylinder at a uh, little to number at 200. So it was uh, uh, appeared in a paper on archive uh, also this year. Um, so the pin, uh, the, the the pin prediction is uh, uh, that is here in the middle of this fake, as you can see. Um, uh, so their pin, um, uh, you know, totally fail to uh, uh, predict the vortex shading uh, if there is no uh, label data uh, used. Okay. Um. So before uh, we uh, Talk about how to resolve these issues. Let's see uh, um, what we uh, actually we have a very uh, similar uh, problem uh, in CFD uh, for for flow at a uh, higher number. So here uh, uh, the uh, movie on the top shows when uh, we sorry when we have uh, uh, unresolved uh, uh, DNS the vorticity uh, uh, is obtained from the DNS is actually uh, very, you know, uh, uh, shows a lot of uh, discontinuity. And uh, the result, uh, such as uh, um, uh, drag coefficient or uh, lift coefficient, uh, uh, you know, uh, divides from the uh, different, is different, very lot different from the uh, accurate result. The, uh, the, the, the ground truth a lot. And uh, when, uh, so, but in CFD, uh, we we have uh, some method uh, called the artificial physicality or edit physicality can uh, improve the result a lot. For example, as shown in the, uh, uh, the movie on the uh, bottom. So when artificial, artificial physicality is used to see the uh, physicality uh, uh, become uh, becomes very very smooth and the um, 
the protection of uh, uh, drag coefficient or lift coefficient uh, is uh, accurate. So, so and uh, in, in particular, uh, we have uh, uh, developed uh, 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 an artificial viscosity called uh, entropy viscosity method uh, that can uh, that has uh, uh, has been applied to uh, uh, flow at a high level number. Uh, so our uh, entropy viscosity uh, uh, actually has a very uh, accurate or very uh, has right scaling when uh, uh, close when uh, approach to the to the wall. And uh, so we have uh, applied uh, this entropy viscosity uh, to uh, many type of flow. For example, in uh, um, in in a uh, uh, vortex uh, induced vibration and uh, in uh, two phase flow, uh, uh, we have applied in in the phase field equation as well. Um, so um, naturally, uh, we will think if this artificial viscosity or the entropy viscosity can be applied to applied in in pins. Um, so the answer is yes. Um, so to prove this, actually, uh, we we have uh, uh, simulated uh, using pin um, uh, for uh, for the two dimensional uh, cavity flow. Um, so here, uh, the fig in, in the middle actually shows the uh, is a dis uh, is a, uh, shows the what what is uh, the, the cavity flow. So the cavity flow uh, in this in this study is a uh, 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 is, the flow is uh, bounded in a uh, square domain. Uh, so the top is a uh, moving wall. Uh, in uh, the, the velocity of the, the wall is a uh, uh, the constant, and uh, the rest uh, three walls are, are stationary walls. And uh, for this type of uh, flow uh, in two dimensional, uh, when the Reynolds number is uh, less than uh, smaller than uh, uh, eight thousand. Uh, so there is uh, 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 a steady solution, and uh, some uh, mathematicians already like uh, proved that uh, the steady solution uh, of the two-dimensional uh, NS equation at a uh, relative high Lorentz number may not be you know uh, may not be unique, and um, actually um, for the cavity flow uh, with uh, two moving walls, for example, if uh, both uh, the top walls and the bottom walls are moving. A multiple solution can be obtained uh, numerically by um, by like uh, finding that difference method, and uh, this has already been uh, 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 proved in a paper. For example, in uh, the paper the GFM paper in nineteen ninety seven and uh, uh, a paper published in Computers and the Fluids in 2016. However, for the current uh, um, uh, cavity flow problem, which has only one moving walls, uh, so the, the, the numerical method can only find uh, uh, one solution. So, and uh, however, uh, when we use uh, the pins or the NSF net uh, to solve uh, uh, this uh, cavity flow with, on, uh, with uh, only one moving walls. So we get uh, um, uh, two types of solution. So here we have run uh, this uh, flow uh, using pin uh, five times, and the pin gets five different solutions as shown by these five uh, fix of uh, string lines of the of the solutions, so these five solutions actually can be uh, grouped in two group in two type, type A and type B. So the type B solution uh, is much closer to uh, the reference DNS solution, but the type A solution uh, is very different from the DNS solution. Um, so in, initially, uh, I, I, I thought uh, the type A solution is uh, uh, just uh, a garbage, uh, garbage. It's not the solution of, at all of the uh, Navier-Stokes equation. However, uh, um, uh, 
uh, th that time uh, uh, George comes in and uh, he suggests that uh, maybe we, we should uh, look at the residuals of uh, uh, type A solution. Uh, so here uh, I show uh, two uh, uh, two uh, residuals of uh, 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 the residuals of two type of solution. Type A, case A is from type A solution, case B is from uh, type B solution. So as you can see uh, in type A solution, so except in the uh, corners where there is a singularity, uh, the residuals actually is uh, very small, uh, smaller than uh, uh, 10 to the power of negative three. And uh, in type B solution, um, so the uh, residuals are in a comparable you know, level uh, compared to a uh, type A solution. However, a type A solution, the area of type A solution is uh, around 19%, you know, uh, compared to the thing S solution. But the type B solution uh, is only uh, 2%, the area is only 2%. So although they have very um, uh, different uh, area, relative area compared to the thing S solution, but uh, the residuals are in a comparable, comparable level. So uh, we can see that uh, both uh, type A solution and type B solution satisfy the uh, NS equation. So uh, we see uh, type A solution is also uh, a solution of the uh, NS equation. Um, well, in, in practical, uh, type A solution is just not you know, uh, physical meaningful and uh, or it's not a practical, it's, uh, not, it's just uh, useless in, in practical in, or in engineering. Uh, so, uh, so we must have to find a method that can uh, avoid to avoid getting, uh, avoid the uh, type A solution. So uh, and to this, uh, the entropy viscosity can help. Um, so in order to use the entropy physicality, we have to, um, uh, you know, uh, change the structure of the uh, pin, original pin. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, we have uh, one more output variable, which is R here, show here. Um, so R is uh, the predict uh, equation residuals. So how to uh, get the residuals? It is uh, shown here uh, in in the uh, equations uh, in the uh, dashed uh, box here. So you can notice that uh, the loss equation and uh, equation loss equation of the uh, of the pins with uh, entropy viscosity uh, is uh, 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 reformulated as this. Uh, so here the new e is the uh, Actually, the um, the uh, entropy viscosity. So new E can be calculated by the uh, formula on the bottom here. So as you can see, um, there are uh, two free parameters, alpha and beta, and these two parameters are uh, like um, the hyperparameter, which can be uh, uh, changed during training, and uh, except this uh, difference. Um, so uh, other uh, uh, training uh, training strategy or training parameters are same as uh, before. So here we have used the Adams optimizer, and uh, we have uh, used uh, the Latin hypercube hyper hyper uh, sample, sampling uh, scheme to generate residual uh, points. And uh, we in the training we have uh, uh, have uh, you know. Uh, Four hidden layer and uh, uh, one hundred and twenty uh, neurons in each uh, hidden layers. Um, so with this, uh, with this uh, uh, entropy viscosity uh, aug aug uh, augmented uh, uh, pins, we can get a uh, uh, very different uh, um, solution compared to the original uh, pins. So. Uh, you may recall that uh, in, in the original pin, we get five different solutions compared to the DNS, but uh, um, 
with the uh, the new uh, pins, we get uh, uh, only one type of solution, which is uh, uh, close to uh, the DNS solution. And uh, here is uh, uh, one of the uh, solution, uh, one of the solution. Uh, so the left one shows the um, uh, string lines of the ground truth, and the right one shows the uh, uh, string lines from the uh, entropy physicality and uh, augmented uh, pins. So as you can see, uh, the new pin can uh, predict both the, the large uh, vortex as well as the uh, small vortex in the corner very accurately. And uh, uh, quantitatively, uh, Oh, hi, the, Jitsun, can I can ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, can you go back a little bit to the equation, to the part where we show, you were showing the neural network? Yeah, the, this one. Yeah, uh, before, you said that you were predicting these R, uh, but I, I got lost a little bit uh, because... Uh, okay. Uh, before, can you go a bit before, like... Uh, this one? Yeah, yeah. You said that you're predicting these R, right? And yes. I, these are like the residuals of the... Of the network, but I, I don't understand. I thought that the residuals were the errors themselves. So, can you please explain me this a bit more? Uh, yes. So, we have a new variable which is R, and uh, R actually can be um, predicted by uh, minimizing this equation, e equation e e4. Okay, but this equation e4, what, what would be because you first conservation of momentum x, momentum y, and then conservation of mass, right? This e4, what, what is it? How do we get that e4? Uh, yeah, e, 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 r is equal to this, this one, as you see this one. So this is actually is uh, uh, the entropy of the equation. Oh, okay. So yeah. this is the uh, type of entropy. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, the viscosity. I see. So you, and you apply this uh, viscosity to all the points in the inside it, the domain or right, the, right. because i i understood I, I actually professor church really liked your your idea and he was talking with us the other day and but i thought he said that you only you were only applying like into, into the corners and he said something no, no, that, no, no. No. but but he, he said something that in the vorticity the problem is not like the vorticity becomes unbounded in the borders due to the discontinuity or something like that but uh like how is that can you can you explain me, please? Oh, uh, well, let's that, well, vorticity is uh, unbounded, but it's not uh, the viscosity. It's a, it's a different concept. Yeah, but you're applying to every single point, right? You you will have uh, this... yes, yes, yes. But uh, actually, I mean, I I, I will show you later a, a plot of the uh, predict uh, the uh, entropy viscosity. So you will see. Uh, give me a second. So you, you will see later, like, I can explain to you later. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you will see. Um, so here is a, a quantitative uh, comparison between uh, pins and uh, and the CFD or ground truth. And uh, so here is actually the uh, predict uh, um, the entropy viscosity. So after the training, you see that uh, uh, the entropy viscosity seems like, uh, uh, you know, for uh, only in the corner or uh, very close to the to, to, to the walls. So, yeah, you see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Thank you. Yeah. So maybe initially, maybe um, the entropy viscosity is everywhere in, inside the domain, but after training, after the solution is uh, uh, converted to the to the DNS. And the entropy viscosity will just you know located uh, close to the in, in the corner or close to the to the wall, where the, the there is a large gradient of velocity. Okay, yeah, that, uh, this is just yeah. And one question. Um, this is actually about the this artificial viscosity is a bit new for me. So I'm sorry if it's a if it's redundant. But the question is uh, if I uh, see in some way you're modifying the the you're adding an additional law right you're modifying your physical law how can you add a modify the physical law without no, no. The problem? no I, I didn't uh, uh, modify any laws so this is just uh, um the entropy of the of the equation so it's a 
um, it's you know yin yin. I, I think the yin yin you recommend uh, that there is uh, like there is some some guideline that uh, uh, only say say that um uh, the, the the scheme is stable only when uh the entropy is like you know uh, diminished or it's like bounded then the, the scheme is stable so it's it's like it's the same thing actually I think. Okay, but but in in some way, wouldn't it be like you are altering a little bit of system because essentially in the real case you would not have any viscosity, right? And then you're assuming no, no, that... no, 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 no. Yeah, for example, because because for example, what you just show me like was like if you just yeah. show me like, okay, this yeah, I, I know your concept, but uh, as you can you look at if you look at the the predicted attribute viscosity, so let's say is the um the the real entropy physicality over uh, the physical physicality, you see that uh, um, the value is very small. So it's like uh, very close to the real system. Oh, okay, but it's, but you're perturbing the real system, but yeah, but it's like yeah. something that close in a good, close enough yeah. to, yeah, okay, yeah. Now you get it, thank you. Okay, so. Um, so here, uh, this figure shows uh, the loss case actually during training. So here in the red line uh, is the loss case actually of the equation and the blue line is the loss case actually of the uh, equation. Uh, sorry, uh, loss case actually of the, of the boundary condition. So as you can see, after one million epochs, um, the loss of uh, uh, equation is uh, smaller than uh, 10 to the power of negative uh, 6 and the loss uh, of uh, uh, the boundary condition is uh, smaller than uh, down to um, down to uh, uh, 10 to the power of uh, uh, negative 8. So, but it takes like you know, 1 million epochs. So it's uh, very time consuming. Um, so, when we try to uh, uh, apply the pins, the new pins to uh, uh, cavity flow uh, at uh, little number uh, larger than 3000, we find that uh, we have to use a different uh, network structure uh, in, in order to get a good result. Uh, so the network structure actually is shown here in this, by this fig. So you see that uh, we will use an independent uh, network to uh, output the uh, R variable. Uh, by using this new uh, network, we, we are able to uh, predict um, uh, cavity flow at uh, little number 5,000, as shown by, this, uh, uh, by the comparison of uh, uh, string lines between uh, the DNS and the pin, as well as uh, um, the Quantitative uh, comparison between uh, between the CFD and uh, and the pins. Okay, so um, we have also uh, done some studies of the parameter alpha and the beta. Um, in particular, we find that uh, when uh, alpha is uh, equal to a point o three, uh, the pin and the uh, entropy physicality augmented the pin uh, get best accurate uh, best result uh, as shown as shown by the mean um, uh, error here in, the, in red red color and uh, we also studied the the, uh, num the effect of a number of uh, sampling points uh, by simulated the by predict the uh, flow at the uh, number three thousand. So as uh, the result uh, tell us that uh, um, the the number of the increase of number of uh, residual points is not necessary, you know, uh, improve the uh, result. Um, so uh, as you may recall that uh, we I said that uh, we the alpha the parameter alpha beta uh, is uh, uh, can be uh, can be a variable. Uh, it's like uh, a hyper parameter. It can be tuned. Uh, so when we have uh, used when 
alpha and beta is a uh, uh, variable, just like uh, the learning rate change, uh, decreasing during the training. Um, we find that uh, the uh, predict the pin prediction can be uh, further improved. For example, uh, for flow at uh, uh, number two thousand, the uh, the relative mean error uh, can be down to three point six, and the for the relative error for uh, three thousand can be down to four point five, and uh, the two network structure uh, gives better result compared to the uh, net uh, only single network. So as shown in uh, by the result uh, uh, for flow at uh, uh, the number three thousand. So in single new network. Uh, the mean uh, error is uh, around uh, 4.5, and uh, for two network, uh, the mean error is uh, down to uh, 3.1. Uh, 3 um, okay. So, uh, so next I will uh, explain, try to explain um, uh, why uh, uh, the entry difficulty can improve the uh, improve the like, uh, pin prediction. So we uh, uh, studied the, the the loss and skip or the loss uh, surface of the of the training. So by in order to so in order to uh, visualize the loss surface, uh, we have to uh, construct uh, this objective function. So with the two uh, variables, epsilon one and epsilon two. So in 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 this function, uh, so uh, the psi and the gamma are the two uh, direction vectors associated to the first two PC components of matrix uh, W1 minus W2, W2 minus W WN, and so on. Where WN is a uh, uh, trained uh, weight on on I's N's uh, epoch, and uh, we in order to visualize the uh, 3D you know, surface, we have uh, uh, sampled uh, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 uh, in, in the range uh, negative 50 to uh, positive 50. So here uh, is the uh, result. Uh, so, Jip -Jip, it's me again. Uh, can, can, yeah. you, can you explain me once again what was like uh, this, this like SEDA? Epsilon theta, the WN is your network parameters, right? Yeah, WN is the is the weight. Yeah. Okay, and your your epsilon one and epsilon two was uh, the the. Oh, uh, is the is the two, uh, is the two like uh, two variables. Two variables. Two, only two oh. variables. Yeah. But but you get them from your PCA. How how is that? Because um, can you can you the oh. detail? so. We, we, we first uh, generate this matrix, W1 yeah. minus Wn, W2 minus Wn. So Wn is uh, uh, the saved weight during the training. So we yeah. can get uh, get the uh, direction uh, direction uh, vectors. And uh, we uh, apply PCA to this direction uh, matrix or direction vectors. And we chose the first two PCA direction. And uh, the first two pieces are the epsilon one and epsilon. Oh, okay. So those are like the the the, the main directions that you choose with the yeah, yeah, main with... directions, right, right. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. what is this um this zeta and this gamma that you're multiplying them with? Oh, uh, zeta gamma is actually uh explained here is the direction vectors. It's like unit unit vectors. Oh, the unit vectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, that's actually um. Okay, okay, it's fun because I what usually because I also played a little bit with lost landscape and what you usually do is like uh, actually Raj made that code and it's like you get the whole the whole matrix and then you map them with the PCA and then you just yeah. project your you 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 just generate a grid in those directions and then you just project the points to get the right. new parameters. Right. But, uh, but yeah, but I see. Okay, okay, sounds good. Thank you. One that is yep. exactly the same formulation. So uh, epsilon one, epsilon two is the minus one to one, the the uh, limit of the 
uh, coordinate of the axis actually and as zeta and gamma is a pca vector actually so that's that's similar same formulation which i use so. oh okay 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 yeah great thank yeah. you sure yeah thank you much um okay so here is the result the pca result so so let, let, this fig shows the uh, lost land lost surface of the original uh pins so as you can see here the, in the original pins um the lost surface is very rough and uh, it gets the original pin get uh, a very uh, uh, large area it's about 20 23 percent relative area 20 percent three percent and also in, in, in this fake uh, this uh, red uh, sphere that shows uh, uh, the training uh, trajectory. Um, next, so uh, when uh, as it as we are known that uh, in pins, uh, if there is uh, label data, uh, the the prediction can be improved a lot. So here uh, we have used one single data point which is located at x equal 0.7, y equal 0.5. So the, uh, the, the prediction is, uh, um, the error prediction is uh, um, down to uh, uh, 0. Point, uh, uh, less than 1%. 1, 1 and uh, as if we look at the uh, loss uh, surface, you see the loss surface becomes a very, uh, very, very smooth. And uh, if there is no uh, uh, label data, but uh, uh, there is uh, uh, entropy physicality, we see that uh, uh, the loss surface is also uh, very uh, smooth, and uh, the prediction, uh, the solution uh, is uh, has a small, uh, small uh, relative error, which is uh, about uh, three percent. So. Uh, it seems that uh, uh, both the label data and uh, the entropy physicality uh, both uh, smooth the loss surface, and uh, it can help the optimizer to find the uh, global minimum uh, much easier. Uh, Dijun, another question. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, for the first case, uh, uh, if I understood correctly, you said that we had. Um, two types, uh, we have like, for example, two types of solutions. There are two solutions or multiple solutions of that. Is there a way to observe those multiple solutions in the lost landscape? Because I assume that if you have two, two solutions, though both of them had to have like a really low error, right? So if you, is there a way to map them in a way that you can see like the two, the two deeps, the two? Yeah, that's a good, very good question. Actually, uh, yes, uh, uh, I think, yeah, I can do it, uh, but I don't have it right now. Uh, I, but I still have the data, like original data. I think I, I, I can get, uh, plot it uh, you know, after the, after the, you know, after okay. the, yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, and that's a good also, question, yeah. Also, another question, because, uh, oh, you're going to take a conclusion, so I assume you're, you're finishing soon, right? Or, or let, 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 because yeah, it's another... pretty much you go to the end. Uh, it's uh, like, to, to okay. Yeah, so yeah. Before... Before you finish, uh, uh, I remember that one of the ways you motivated a problem was like, uh, because uh, you went to the case where you go high Reynolds number and you were showing this flow past the cylinder and you said that yeah, the yeah. work so well when you have, uh, when you have um, high Reynolds number. Uh, did you, uh, uh, did you try something with a flow pass, a uh, bland body or flow, flow plus? Yeah, 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 yeah. yes, uh, we are doing it right now. Um... Uh, yes, yeah, so we we with the uh, with the um uh, entropy difficulty, we, we actually we can improve the uh, the result a lot. Uh, we we can find we we, we can uh, simulate the the vortex jetty, but uh, because uh, you know for the unsteady problem, um, there is one one like one dim one more like direction, uh, one one more uh, uh, like a, like three dimensional problem. So. It takes much more time to 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 train. So, um, it, it so right now we, we just don't have uh, like a very very good result to like uh, to to present. Okay, to you. thank yeah. you. Uh, one question also about that is: like, Did you try to obtain vortex shedding with a without data, like uh, in a forward? Yes, mode? yes, yes. Without any data inside within the domain. 
Oh, and right. if you when, and you can get it when you yeah these artificial viscosity or you can get it without yeah the yeah. Uh, yeah, because, with, with the yeah because usually when if you try to get vortex shading without any tricks you usually don't get it right just because the ping smooths everything just is kind of hard so you have to have to use tricks you cannot get a vortex shading from scratch usually with pings. Uh, can you repeat your question? I just a little bit lost. Uh, can can you can you share a little bit how do you solve uh, the how do you get vortex shading uh with without oh. fixing any data like right um so so basically we we try to like uh replicate uh, a CFD um but currently we only we we, we have uh we, we take a snapshot from CFD which has already like uh, developed into uh, um developed into a vortex shading uh, and uh, as uh, as uh, as initial condition for for pins and uh, oh. we uh, then we solve the uh, the unsteady uh, number stars equation in the pin and uh, um, we can um, get uh, using pin we can get uh, the uh, vortex shading but we, we, we start from uh, oh like, yeah, uh, so it's, yeah. it's similar because I think it's not to first... start from zero right now because uh, uh, it takes time to develop it into this uh, vortex settings and uh, the pin training is still you know, very time consuming. So yeah. yeah, so you need a lot of yeah. Okay, I see, I see. So you you are. But also, I, 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 yes. Talking. So yeah, I think that if we have like uh, um like you know, more like uh, computer resources and uh, we 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 can. Uh, get what I said from zero yeah, from scratch. Oh. oh, okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. But yeah. you you always have to feed the the first the snapshot you feed it from the CFD solver. So where yes, you were yes, yeah, yeah. We we take a snapshot from CFD as the initial condition. Okay, and have you have you because uh, I talked with Professor Jason, he said that actually, uh, Shengse has a, a trick to get it uh, to, to get right, 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 right. So uh, it's like without uh, the CFD. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, like uh, you you just uh, take the time sequence into several windows and uh, you change windows by windows, but it still take time to like uh, like to a get, sequential uh, training. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Great, great. Thank you, thank you so much, Jitting. I'm sorry for many. I yeah, made sure, you too, sure. too many questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, pretty much go to the conclusion. Um. So let's see. Uh, so Ping can find uh, uh, multiple solutions from the two steady uh, NS equation at a uh, relative high level number. And uh, we find the both Ping, the both, both label data and the NGP faculty can smooth the loss surface. And it helps Ping to select the DNS solution. And, uh, and we find that uh, the Ping is very time consuming and the uh, speed up is, uh, is, you know, is required. To be uh, to make pin practical in, in engineering, and we also want to say that uh, the paper and uh, the study of the paper and the pin code are available uh, in, in, in GitHub. Yeah, so, so that's it. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you so much, Professor uh, Wang, for your great talk. Uh, do we have any question for a speaker from the audience? Hi, uh, thank you for your uh, wonderful presentation. This is uh, Yu Xin Wu from uh, Tsinghua University. I'm now a research pro, uh, scholar in Crunch Group. Um, so I have uh, several questions. So the firstly, your test is uh, the high Reynolds number uh, flow for cavities. So I want to know, for for example, for Reynolds like 5,000, is flow itself steady or, or unsteady? Um, oh, it's a steady. It's a steady. It's so a still steady be steady. Flow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, secondly, yeah. So, when, yeah, for mm -hmm. two dimensional flow, when little number is less than I don't know eight thousand, it's still steady flow. Steady still solution. steady flow. Okay, steady yeah. solution. Thank you for explaining. So, so when you uh adopt the the entropy um uh, uh viscosity, so did you also Enforce this in your safety simulation. Uh, 
Well, for the, these flows, I, I never use uh, uh, entropy difficulty. It's a DNS solution. Yeah. So for I mean, uh, for example, for um, okay, you just uh, compare with DNS solution. So yeah, so yes, there's yes. no run some yeah. other type yeah. of I mean, solution. Yeah. Yes. Like because of the entropy difficulty even in 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 CFD or in 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 uh, in DNS uh, using numeric method. Uh, at least uh, there's a number, the entropy difficulty is very small. So it's basically uh, using like using my uh, air, mm -hmm. I, I can see no difference. Yeah. Okay, so so for uh, some other flows, I may also uh, for pin solution also, it looks uh, different types of multi solutions may exist. Do you think uh, your approach will be have a, a I mean universal effect for to to uh to try to help get a true yeah. solution. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Um. So because for example, uh, when there are quite a lot of study right now that uh, shows that if for example if both the top wall and uh, the bottom wall are moving. So uh, there are multiple solutions can be obtained uh, by the convention, conventional uh, numerical method. So I think the ping also like can do this. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So are there any other questions? Um. Uh, hi, excuse me. Uh, uh, before I want to ask my question, I saw somebody is raising his hand. Uh, maybe you could yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, participate. And yeah, and I, I first. I got you. Sorry. Yeah, I was waiting uh, for the chairman to ask me. I, I don't know if uh, what, what is yes. the issue. Can you, yeah. can you introduce yourself yeah, sure. first and ask? Yeah, uh, uh, Thank you. Yeah, I am Alessandro. Um, I work in a Scuola Superiore Meridionale in Napoli, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher working in fluid dynamics. So, very interesting talk. And uh, uh, I have, let's say, one question, but before making the question, I would be sure to have understood correctly. Okay, so what uh, it seems to me is that the um, artificial viscosity that you are uh, putting inside the, uh, the neural network is a uh, kind of uh, uh, avoiding that you obtain the multiple solutions, right? And it is acting uh, actually where you have the uh, the singularity of the vorticity, where you have the peaks of the vorticity. So your artificial viscosity is almost zero everywhere except where the vorticity is singular, let's say. So by uh, smoothing the vorticity there, you come back to have just one solution. Is like this. Uh, well, Yes. So after after training, you know, after the solution, the pin solution is uh, close to the DNS solution. It seems like yeah. uh, uh, the edge of its like only uh, located uh, close exactly. to the singularity a uh, corner. But uh, yeah, so at the, it, it is yeah, like but, that, it, yeah, your it, it is like this. Your pin solution, uh, you have two pin solutions before introducing the entropy viscosity, right? The unphysical right, right, and right. the physical, let's say. The, okay, so and you, uh, of course, uh, like mm, infer that the double solution, so the the second solution, the one which is uh, let's say unphysical that you don't have with the DNS, but it is a solution of Navier-Stokes equations, right? Because you showed the residual before, and you yes, yes. told that. Oh, okay, so maybe the, the point is this, okay, you um, uh, attribute the second solution, let's say it is an unstable solution of Navier-Stokes equation, which DNS is not able to obtain, and you have it in your uh, pins without artificial viscosity because of the right. singularity in the vorticity that you have in the corner. It's like, I, 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 this is the first question. So what, why do you think that your things without artificial viscosity gives you two solutions instead of one. Well, I, so what I, is the reason? Yeah, I guess that's because uh, it means that there is no um, no numerical viscosity at all. Like uh, yeah. just yeah, 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 yeah
Yeah, so maybe I got it. I, indeed, by introducing the numerical viscosity, you again have just one solution which well compares with the DNS one. Right. Right. Okay, yeah. good. So this is the point. So your RTV, your physics informed neural network needs an artificial viscosity coefficient to uh, um, to uh, give uh, you back just the DNS solution. So this is, right. uh, I believe, really interesting because from another point of view, we can also say that your pin solution is go is is uh, uh, so your physics informed neural network without artificial viscosity is giving us back multiple solutions of the of the same equations, right? And I mean, there are both valid. It's just that DNS is not able to give you the unstable one. Right, right. Okay, and uh, so my question finally is, uh, of course, this, I, I believe this is really interesting because it means that we have, let's say we can use this method to explore also other solutions of the of the same equations, which maybe we cannot see with DNS because it gives us, DNS just gives us back the stable solution maybe. And so my question is, what is your idea about this? So why the, uh, maybe it is in the architecture of the neural network in the way we train it, but why you think that things uh, are giving us back more than one solution? There are both solutions that they are both valid. That's the point. You use, you use the artificial viscosity just to uh, have one of the two, the stable one. But why do you think that your physics informed neural network without artificial viscosity is giving you back uh, another uh, solution, which is uh, I would say not unphysical. It's just uh, um, unstable. Okay, but. It is the same physical maybe validity, or at least it is the same mathematical validity. It has the same mathematical validity of the of the DNS solution. So, what is your idea about well, this? Why the the, the 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 neural network is able to do this and not the DNS? Maybe it's in the architecture of the of the network. Yeah, that's a good question. Well, uh, I think that's probably because uh, you, you know there are like many like local minimums. Uh, you know, training. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, lo lo local minimum, local minimum, it's global okay. minimum, local minimum. Yeah, DNS is just like the like global minimum, and uh, like other solutions is the uh, local minimum, but uh, without any um artificial viscosity, uh, the optimizer just you know stuck at the mm -hmm. local minimum. Yeah, it's and just, maybe you are yeah. moving the local minima out to introducing the artificial viscosity, right? That's why you come back uh, just to the DNS solution when you put the artificial viscosity. Maybe. Yeah, that's like yeah, that's my, my guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure. That's good. So, next question. Who wants to ask the next question? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I saw somebody is raising his hand. Maybe he can ask yeah. first. <laughs> okay, Nicholas, uh, can you ask a question? First, introduce yourself. And, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. um, hello, I'm Nicholas. I'm a PhD student at Johns Hopkins University. So, so based on, thought on Alessandro's question, I was wondering if like by computing the, the eigenvalues of the Jacobian of the linearization based on your network networks, you could see that indeed the one is unstable or stable. Is this something that you did or is of interest? Uh, no, 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 I haven't. No, it's, but that's a good suggestion, yeah. Uh, but I never did the it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, hi, Dr. Wang. Uh, I'm Kai Liao from, from Zhejiang University. I'm a postdoc, uh, also working on, on pins. And, and I, I, I really, um, I think your, your research is very, very invaluable because tur turbulent, uh, inferring turbulence in, uh, with pins is very challenging, uh, as I know. Uh, my question is, uh, mm, do, do you think it, it, it is possible, it is possible for pins to, to do the, uh, the common turbulence uh, flow, turbulent flow problems. Uh, I mean, uh, those those problems like uh, um, high rate high rate assembly jet flow uh, or, or boundary uh, layer flow. That uh, first uh, it is totally un unstable, and the second um, uh, it has chaotic uh, fluctuation velocity. 
because right now in the lead driven flow is uh, it, although the renal sample is several thousand but is still uh, steady right uh, but yes, usually yes. the problem is completely unsteady and chaotic yes, uh, yes, I feel, yes. Yeah, right now I feel it is even impossible for pins to do it. I don't. I want to know your opinion. Well, thanks. Yeah, thank you for your question. Well, uh, I I think it's it is possible, but it's just not like it's not like uh, practical right now because it's uh, for three dimensional and unsteady flow. We will have uh, like additional two dimensions, right? so it's uh, just not uh, you know practical right now to to train uh, to train the, 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 the pin. Yeah, so that's my my opinion. I see. Thank you. And one uh, last question is about your your uh, equation. I saw you have uh, uh, four uh, user defined uh, pra uh, parameters like alpha, beta, um, vm. Uh, are all these oh. variables uh, par uh, parameters uh, constant for all problems, or it is, or are they uh, problem dependent? Yeah, this uh, is my last well, question. Yeah, it's a good question. So uh, VM and uh, UM and uh, VM and, uh, is a constant for all the simulation, but uh, alpha and the beta uh, are variables. Uh, so, mm, well, it, uh, um, it's not, not, not a very much difference between case by case. I mean, even like 3,000 or 5,000, uh, uh, in particular, uh, beta is uh, like con is, is still a constant, but alpha uh, can be changed. It's like the uh, uh, learning rate, uh, you, you, can, you can change it uh, during, during tra training. Uh, I see. Uh, you you said uh, UM and VM are also uh, are constant, right? Uh, but yes, are they yes. related to your velocity scale? For example, if my lead driven flow, the uh, the lead speed is ten ten like ten meters per second. Yeah, you are you are right. Yes, it's uh it's like so here I chose the point five just because it's like the, the middle of the uh it's a middle mean velocity like something like that, you know. From, from the maximum is one meter per second and uh, and the small the minimum is one zero so it's uh, it's minimum is 0.5 so the reason here I have uh, uh, minus uh, um and uh, vm is because uh, uh, by using this formula we will uh, uh, have uh, uh, zero uh, we, we will not have zero uh, uh, residual uh, uh, you know at the at the boundary. Yeah, it's just you know to make try to make uh, non-zero value in, inside the boundary layer or close to the close to the boundary. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. So I think the next question will be from Raj. Raj, do you have any question? Yes, Jicheng, uh, in your implementation, uh, you don't have a pin implementation the time dependent term. Uh, so well, it, yeah, it could, in, in this it, it case, could, yeah, it, I think it could be one of the reason for solution multiplicity because when you do the CFD simulation, you have a time dependent term and then you solve it through the conversion. So I'm not yeah, sure like, yes. if that yes, could add yes. to the solution multiplicity. Yes, yes, yes. It's a, you, I think you are right. Um, yeah, the, the, the mathematician said that uh, you know steady yes. solution, yeah, it's, uh, has a, may may not be unique. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, you, if you, I think uh, I was doing some experiment even with pin. So I had that even for a low Reynolds number, like when you add the uh, time dependent term. So that makes a lot of change actually. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I, that could be the one of the. So uh, just last, uh, like um, this very naive question. So for eddy viscosity that you added, so it's added in the parabolic term. So is it like some sort of the, that kind of viscosity solution, like we do for viscous burgers equation? That is the reason. Uh, yes, yes, it's a similar thing. Yeah, I think. Okay, so uh, so it has to be in the parabolic term, not in the convective term. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's because uh, in the parabolic term, it's uh, it's a stabilized simulation. Okay. Okay. 
thanks yeah. Ishak. it's a wonderful talk yeah. so thanks. Yeah. Yeah. thank you thank you so do we have any other questions yeah songram go ahead oh no no i was no. Uh, okay I okay yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay i think we don't have any other questions so it's okay. time to conclude the session thank you thank you for your great talk we had a number thank of you. questions today yeah thank you for thank joining you. us today as one of the speakers so yeah. it's time to transition to the next session uh Varun, are you there to share your screen yes one second just let me um Okay, yeah. Can you share your screen? Yes. Okay, can you see it? So, yeah, yeah. The next session is a paper review, a survey on physics inform reinforcement learning review and open problems given by Varun Kumar. Uh, Varun Kumar is a second year PhD student at Brown School of Engineering. He obtained his master's in mechanical engineering from Clemson uh, University and bachelor's in mechanical engineering from BITS, Ranchi. Uh, university, his research interests include generative design, design under uncertainty, and set based design principles. So the virtual floor is yours. You can begin your presentation. Okay, yeah, thanks Nazim. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Varun and today I'll be presenting like a, a review of uh, a paper which is uh, titled A Survey of Physics Informed Reinforcement Learning. Um, so uh, this basic paper is basically like a review of like different uh, applications where people have used physics uh, people have integrated physics in reinforcement learning. So we are just going to review the paper today. Um, so this is the overview of my presentation. Uh, so I'll be like briefly talking about um, like a uh, background on re reinforcement learning as just the basics of like what it means uh, for everyone to have like beyond the like for everyone's understanding. Um, uh, then I'll be like going over like some of the um, like uh, physics informed reinforcement learning aspects where like uh, in this particular paper uh, the authors have defined have like added some definitions and taxonomy so that uh, they have like a coherence in uh, the terminology so i'll briefly go over some of those um, and then most of this paper is basically about um, a literature review of different applications um, so that um, that is what this uh, the, the bulk of this paper contains it's basically like a literature review of applications where people have used physics in reinforcement learning. So I'll just like present some examples. Um, there are a lot of examples in this paper, but I'll just like go over three or four like examples um, just to give an idea of what uh, what uh, people are trying to do. And then I'll end my talk with like presenting some of the open challenges and uh, research directions that are um, identified by the researchers in this paper. Um, so this is just like a brief primer of reinforcement learning for uh, everyone's um, um, for completeness. Uh, so it, reinforcement learning uh, is basically it consists of six, six key components. Uh, you have an agent which is basically like um, it's basically like a like an actor which takes an action. Um, so in most like control problems, this agent is like a controller uh, which can actually change like some state of your system. And then um, you have an environment in which your system operates. Uh, so this is the environment where like your um, system is going to function. Uh, you have states of the system, which is uh, defined like uh, um, based on the use case. Then you have actions which your agent will take. You have like a set of actions that you can take at a certain state. Uh, and then you have like a reward function, which is uh, basically like you take an action at a particular state. Uh, so what is the reward um, that you get when you move from like one state to the next? Uh, so that, that's, uh, that's a reward. And then you have a policy which determines like at each state, uh, what should be your next uh, action? So in most like uh, uh, reinforcement learning problems, um, most of them are basically trying to learn this policy so that they can optimize uh, the system behavior. 
um and the this is like uh this has been this reinforcement learning topic has been like used for uh quite some time now it has i think start it started uh, in 1950s and people have used various strategies to actually um use reinforcement learning um recently with the advent of neural networks a lot of like uh, neural network uh, has started to basically integ be integrated into this framework um so um the, the overall idea is to learn the optimal policy um, that can maximize the cumulative reward over time. So that's the whole uh, idea um, of reinforcement learning. And uh, like most of the process, most of the like problems that are solved, uh, they are Markov, uh, Markovian processes. And, uh, and a lot of the applications that you see of reinforcement learning is in like dynamical system controls. Um, so it's a very big area and uh, there are like some like uh, there are different types of reinforcement learning methods that exist. I just present like some of the um, like key um, methods. So uh, one of the methods uh, that uh, that are like uh, that are used commonly, one of the methods that is used commonly is like a model free reinforcement learning method. And this includes like value iteration, queue learning, policy gradients. Uh, so what this method basically uh, means is that um, in this case, um, the env environment doesn't have like a representation. So there is no model for the environment. So you learn your, uh, uh, your reinforcement learning model basically learns by interacting straight, like directly with the environment. So there is no uh, model to interact with. So, <laughs> so while this is very like uh, real, real, but the challenge is, that exists in this in this particular method uh, where if you don't have like uh, if you don't have access to that environment it is hard to implement something like this so then there's the other alternative which is the model based reinforcement learning where you actually have like a model for your for your environment from which you can learn and uh, you use that model to actually optimize your objective function <clears throat> And the third method is like a policy-based algorithm, which is uh, like uh, you want to optimize the policy. Um, it is based on like the age and trying to optimize the pol policy directly without having to model, like without having to estimate the value functions or uh, the model the environment dy dynamics. So the objective in the policy-based algorithms is to find the policy that maximizes the cumulative reward. And uh, uh, that's, that's the goal of that. And the fourth one is like an online, offline, and on, offline uh, reinforcement learning. So this is basically like a subset of like the model-based uh, uh, reinforcement learning, uh, where the online mode is basically <clears throat> uh, model-free. Here, like you are trying to like uh, interact straight with directly with the environment, and you are trying to update your policy based on the feedback you get from the environment based on the actions you take. The off-policy uh, reinforcement learning is basically uh, you have like uh, you have um, the the agent basically tries to learn from like a policy which is a subset of your uh, complete policy, and there is like an old policy that is used to update your uh, um, that is used to update your um, current policy, and th this process is basically um, uh, 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 carried on continuously so that you uh, get to like an optimal policy in the end. And then there is this like offline uh, <clears throat> reinforcement learning, which is uh, uh, where like you have like an environment, uh, you have like a set of data from uh, that environment, you use that, and then you like basically deploy that in like uh, in the real environment. So you learn in this uh, like uh, uh, representation of your real environment. Uh, you use that, and then you use uh, you basically learn your policy from there. And then you use that policy uh, in the real environment and then again uh, learn in the real world. So those are like the basic uh, uh, methods. Um, and I, this is like not a complete list. There are like several other methods that exist, but these are the methods that um, are, uh, are quite popular. Uh, so coming, like coming down to like uh, what um, the main idea of this paper, um, so the authors em emphasize on like the use of physics in the reinforcement learning problems. Um, and uh, so that's 
um, in order to highlight like where physics can fit in in the reinforcement learning uh, paradigm. Um, th there's like a figure which shows uh, like these green highlighted blocks, which is where like the author say like uh, the physics can be incorporated um, uh, into reinforcement learning. So you have like a state design where you can actually uh, add physics so that you can design the state uh, states of your system um, so that it um, there is like a physics uh, embedded state defined in your state design. You can regulate your actions using physics so that you don't take actions which are uh, beyond the permitted um, states. So, so these actions are basically meant to control like uh, any any like states which are probably not permitted. <coughs> and then you have like the reward reward design where like you have. Um, a reward function which you can define using physics and again this is like uh, um, something which uh, you know uh, a priori that uh, you can design your reward using some sort of physics that you know so these are probably the five blocks that uh, the authors feel where physics uh, is generally used uh, in reinforcement learning and later i'll present like an example for each of these blocks uh, just so that like you have an understanding of like how people are using uh, physics and reinforcement learning for each of these segments. Um, this picture is like another uh, representation of how people um, may use. Uh, so this is not like uh, a defined uh, like uh, paradigm where this is what needs to be, but there are some other smaller uh, like areas where people can use uh, re uh, physics with reinforcement learning. So this is like a summary of that. So there are like 10 like such uh, smaller implementations where people have used like physics with reinforcement learning. So the figure on like, uh, uh, the figure A is basically uh, like a safety filter where the filter is designed based on like a physics based uh, information. Uh, so the action that the agent will take uh, pass through a filter that filter basically um, filters out any like action which is not permitted uh, based on like some physical law such as like a violation of like a, a, say a mass conservation or something like that. Um, so you have those laws, you make a filter out of it. So you can filter out the actions which are not correct or which are not physically feasible. Um, part B is like a physics informed reward. Uh, so here, like you have uh, physics information and you add that to your reward function uh, so that if your uh, system satisfies those the physics that you define, it will get higher reward versus when it is not satisfying the physics. So you basically add your physics to your reward function so that you, um, you satisfy both your physics as well as your uh, as well as the, the like reward function that you define. So that's another way of augmenting your reward function um, by adding physics uh, reward to it. Uh, C is basically like residual learning, where like you are trying to um, you are trying to like use like a physics driven controller, which is built solely on like by using the physical laws, and then you are trying to compare that with like a data driven policy agent, which is uh, like doing the control based on data that it is getting. And then you like compare the delta between the two, and then uh, based on the delta, you take your action uh, as to uh, which way to go. Uh, so this is like uh, more based on residual agent uh, learning. Uh, D is where like you have like a you have a system and you have a policy, and you basically embed the policy, uh, the physics in the policy itself. So the policy that you're going to get from like this this kind of system uh, will satisfy the physics. So uh, like um, the idea here is that you just embed the physics in the in the policy creation process itself and uh, that should actually embed the physics in the whole system. E is like where you have like, a, a, it's basically like a differential simulator. Uh, so you have like a physics based environment, which is, um, um, it's an environment which gives you like a continuous output based on the actions you take uh, because it is driven by physics. So you have a continuous output with respect to your actions. 
and then you can take the gradient of your output with respect to action to again go back and optimize your um, model so that's like using like some sort of like a differential learning algorithm um, for uh, like optimizing your objective function <clears throat> the simulation to real uh, uh, f is basically where you have like a you have a simulation environment which is uh, uh, built using physics and you use that simulated environment to learn your policy and then you transfer that to like your real environment um, the same policy so this helps you like get to like um, it helps you uh, reduce the redundancy that you might have to do, like uh, that you might encounter if you straight away start to train in like a real environment and it also helps you like create policies which satisfy the physics, uh, which can further be optimized when deployed in a real environment. So they have like four others. Um, uh, the details are there in the paper. Um, so I'll like uh, skip the rest of it. Um, so then I move on to like examples of where like, um, so these are the like four or five buckets that we discussed where people have used like reinforcement learning. So I just present an example of like each of these buckets. So this first example is like where people have used uh, reinforcement and uh, the physics in uh, in the state design. Um, so in this particular example, um, the researchers have actually used uh, physics informed reinforcement learning to uh, further improve the adaptive cruise control. So if you <coughs> Uh, if you have used like uh, like any new vehicle that you have driven, it has like a radar and it lets you manage like uh, the gap between the vehicle in front of you uh, when you are like driving in cruise control. Uh, so you you don't have to basically uh, brake or accelerate. It manages the gap automatically. So uh, traditionally, this is like a reinforcement learning uh, uh, example uh, where like uh, the objective is to maintain that separation that you have. So they have like a target separation that needs to be maintained between the two cars. And uh, based on sensor data, they optimize, like they control the acceleration of your car uh, so that the target separation is maintained. But in this work, what uh, the researchers um, tried to do was to actually add physics uh, um, using like uh, the laws that are known. So in terms of like, when you're driving a car, you already know that there is a certain minimum like separation that you have to maintain. So what they did was basically uh, added that uh, that information from like these laws uh, as a state variable into the simulation, and uh, that this this additional information uh, lets them like uh, optimize the objective function so that it meets like the requirements. Uh, um, um uh, that are defined so in this example like uh, the acceleration is defined you in form of like the distance from the like car in front of you the velocity of like that car and your velocity so you have like a set acceleration that you need to maintain and then you also have like this uh, star which is basically um it, it, it's a it's a parameter that defines like the minimum distance you need to maintain so that you don't uh, actually cause like a traffic jam. Uh, so that's another parameter that you can learn from physics. And then you put that in your model and then that the objective that you learn will satisfy like these physics as well. Plus the, uh, the, the policy that you learn by interacting with the environment. And basically uh, uh, they find that uh, the physics driven uh, reinforcement learning paradigm actually works uh, much better as compared to like the uh, general uh, reinforcement learning. <coughs> um, so this example is basically like another bucket where the uh, physics was used to control the action. Uh, so in this case, uh, uh, the authors were trying to regulate um, the they were trying to like create like a reinforcement learning control mechanism uh, to regulate the frequency and voltage control and this was like uh, something that uh, this is something that is very critical in power generation plants uh, where you have to maintain the stability of the generators and you don't want like the voltage uh, to like fluctuate beyond like a certain uh, limit uh, so in this case um they have like a they have like a physics embedded pre-training barrier, uh, which is like uh, 
which is represented using like a neural network. So they have like a neural network which actually learns how to like create like this control barrier uh, for the voltage that comes uh, from the from the generator. And uh, that barrier basically uh, is like uh, is like a threshold. Um, it's like uh, it, it lets you control like uh, the type of uh, actions that your uh, controller can take. And uh, it uh, it's basically like a pre-trained neural network that uh, is trained on um, certain um, uh, certain uh, values of the voltage that are uh, probably not allowed. So it lets you filter like uh, filter the um, uh, uh, voltages that uh, probably should not be allowed to pass um, when you're controlling your uh, system using the controller. So that's like a form of uh, uh, action regulation using physics. Uh, this pretend barrier was basically trained using the physical uh, equations for uh, voltage fluctuation. And uh, it was basically used to control the actions that are taken by uh, the control system so that uh, you don't allow, uh, you don't allow actions that can actually harm your uh, system. Uh, so this is like an example where like physics was used to <clears throat> improve the uh, the reward design. So in this case, um, the authors were using like a, a simulation to real uh, paradigm where they had like a model of the environment where they learn and then they transfer it to like the real environment where they actually deploy the model. Uh, so the uh, objective here was to optimize the motion of this bipedal uh, 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 robot. And uh, one of the things that you already know in this example is that uh, the motion is like cyclic and periodic. So you can define like, uh, you can define your reward function such that it incorporates the cyclic and the periodic nature of the motion. So apart from like your regular reward you also add your um, uh, the cyclic physics um, uh, in your reward function so that when your uh, when your uh, model actually satisfies uh, this uh, this particular physics uh, it turns a higher reward as compared to when it uh, does not satisfy this physics the reward is less so the idea is basically here to match the trajectory um, and improve the trajectory, which is based on physics as well as like the uh, simulation environment uh, that you are using. So again, in this case also, they found like uh, that using like a physics-based reward function actually improves the performance of the system. Uh, and this is like the fourth example where like uh, the authors in this like particular work, we are trying to create like a simulation environment uh, that was solely driven like by physics. Uh, so like they took the canonical examples like the card pole and the pendulum, which is uh, traditionally used for reinforcement learning tasks or like, reinforcement learning uh, evaluation. And they basically, instead of using the environments that are available, uh, they build the environment from uh, use the physical laws. And we compared like uh, the performance of uh, Three different types. So, uh, so the SSE here is basically the standard environment, and they use like a deep uh, neural network based um, simulation environment. And the third environment that they proposed was like based on uh, Lagrangian dynamics. So in this case, they used like a pin based model to simulate the environment, which was like uh, defined on Lagrangian, uh, which uh, was defined on Lagrangian dyna dynamics principles. And in all the cases, like they found like the Lagrangian uh, model actually performed much better as compared to uh, the other examples. Uh, and this is like the fifth bucket where like the physics uh, informed um, whether the physics was used to augment the policy. Um, so in this case, uh, they were trying to control the transient voltage and they incorporated like the physics uh, directly into the uh, policy um, creation uh, phase. So the policy that comes out from your reinforcement learning model is basically uh, it satisfies the it satisfies the physics of your um, of your problem. And they found like um, the uh, the voltage control was much better. Um, 
when you have like a, a, a physics driven policy um, uh, uh, system for your reinforcement learning uh, model. Uh, so uh, this is like the current state of research where like uh, we see a lot of work be done in like the area of uh, uh, filter designs and uh, physics for reward. So this is like where safety filter is like one key area where like people want to control um, the action that your systems can take so that you don't end up like causing uh, or you don't end up taking actions which can cause uh, issues in the real world. So that's a big focus. And then uh, a lot of the work is actually, if you look at this pie chart, you'll see a lot of work being done in like the area, like agent control and dynamical controls. <laughs> uh, so that's another key area where like uh, people are actually um, looking to use reinforcement learning, especially physics informed uh, reinforcement learning, because um, uh, that uh, control is basically the biggest uh, um, area where reinforcement learning, learning is used. And now they are trying to basically uh, use physics to improve like uh, the actions that are being taken by uh, in these um, control-based environments. Uh, so this is like uh, my last slide. Um, so these are like some of the open challenges and research directions. So in this case, um, People are trying to like learn from like real systems, which are like very high dimensional. And this is um, sometimes a problem when you're trying to like uh, learn um, how to represent these high dimensional spaces. Um, and uh, that's an active area of research because uh, you can try to learn the latent space, but then whether it is physically like relevant or not, uh, that's a question. Uh, Again, like we already discussed this earlier, where like uh, safety, um, the actions that you take from your model, uh, they have to ensure that it's safe to take that action. So that's another key area of research where like, uh, how do you filter these actions that you're taking uh, and make sure that you don't end up like uh, uh, causing like, or taking some actions which are uh, probably not allowed, or uh, should not be allowed. Uh, so how you like incorporate physics uh, to take those actions, especially in uncertain environments. So that's a key area of research. And another key, key, key research topic is like, how do you choose your physics uh, when you don't know, like when you don't have a complete understanding of the like uh, laws that govern your environment. So if you go out, like uh, you have like autonomous driving cars, um, the environment is not very well defined. Uh, it keeps it's a very dynamic uh, environment. So how do you use like physics priors in such situations? Um, I think that's uh, that's a that's a very uh, interesting research topic. And lastly, like uh, how do you like evaluate and benchmark uh, your methods? And that is something that uh, that exists for traditional reinforcement learning uh, methods today. But uh, that is something which uh, I think is. Um, something that needs to be like looked into in future if people start to integrate more physics uh, into their reinforcement learning models. So that's another research direction that uh, the authors say um, is, is, is like an interesting research direction to take. And yeah, with that, uh, that's all I had. Um, and uh, yeah, at, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be like more than happy to take them now. Thank you, Varun, for your great talk. So do we have any questions from the audience? I think we don't have any questions. So it shows that you um, reviewed this paper very well. So I think it's time to conclude this session and the seminar. Thank you everybody for joining us today. 
and I hope you have a great weekend ahead. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.